to increase and multiply. In such wise then, the shepherd continued, the generation of these seven came to pass. Earth was as woman, her water filled with longing. Ripeness she took from fire, spirit from ether. Nature thus brought forth frames to suit the form of man. And man from life and light changed into soul and mind, from life to soul, from light to mind. And thus continued all the sense world pairings until the period of their end and a new beginning arrived. Now listen to the rest of the discourse that you long to hear the period being ended, the bond that bound them all was loosened by God's will. For all the animals being male-female, at the same time with man were loosed apart. Some became male, some in like fashion female. And straight away, God spoke by his holy word the Logos increase you in increasing, and multiply in multitude, you creatures and creations all. And man that had mind in him, let him learn to know that he himself is deathless and the cause of death is love, though love is all. When he said this, his forethought did by means of fate in the spheres affect their couplings and their generations founded. And so all things were multiplied according to their kind. And he who thus had learned to know himself, had reached that good that does transcend abundance. But he who through worldly love that same end leads astray, he expends his love upon his body, he stays in darkness, and suffering through his senses the things of death. The way of deathlessness. What is the fault so great the ignorant commit, I asked, that they should be deprived of deathlessness? You seem, the shepherd cautioned, not to have given heed to what you have heard. Did not I bid you think? Yes, do I think, and I remember, I said, and therefore give you thanks. If you did truly think thereon, said the shepherd, tell me why do they merit death or in ignorance? It is because the gloomy darkness is the root and base of the material frame. From it came the watery substance from which the body in the sense world is composed. And from this body of death and darkness does the water drain. Right is your thought, he said. But how does he who knows himself, go up unto him, as God's word had declared? And I reply the father of the universals consists of light and life, and from him, man was born. You are right. Light and life is the divine mind, and from it man was born. If then you know that you are yourself of life and light, and that you were made of them, you shall return to life and light. Thus did the shepherd speak. But tell me further, mind of me, I cried out, how shall I come to life again, for God do say the man who had mind in him, let him learn to know that he himself is deathless. Have not all men then mind? Again you speak well, I, divine mind, myself am present with holy men and good, the pure and merciful men who live piously. To such my presence becomes an aid, and straightway they gain gnosis of all things, and win their father's love by their pure lives, and give him thanks, invoking on him blessings and entering his kingdom, intent on him with ardent love. And before they give the body up unto its proper death, they turn from their bodies with disgust from its sensations, from knowledge of what things they operate. Nay, it is I, the divine mind, that will not let the operations that befall the body work to their natural end. For being the gatekeeper, I close up all the entrances, and bar the entrance of the base and evil workings of the senses, cutting off all thoughts of them. But to the mindless ones, the wicked and depraved, the envious and covetous, and murderous and impious, I keep far aloof, yielding my place to the avenging daimon, who sharpening the fire, torments them and adds fire to fire upon them, and rushes on them through their senses, thus rendering them the readier for their transgressions of the law, so that they meet with greater torment. Nor do they ever cease to have desire for their appetites inordinate, insatiably striving in the darkness. The Ascent of the Soul to the Eighth Sphere Full well have you taught me all, as I desired, zero H divine mind. And now, I beseeched him, pray tell me further of the nature of the way to the life above. To this, the shepherd replied, when your material body is to be dissolved, first you surrender the body by itself unto the work of transformation, and thus the form you had vanishes, and you surrender your way of life, void of its energy, back to its own nature. The body's senses next pass back into their sources, becoming separate, and resurrect as new energies and passion and desire to withdraw into that nature that is void of reason. And thus it is that man does speed his way thereafter upwards through the spheres. He continued to the first zone he gives the energy of growth and waning. Unto the second zone, the devices of evil now to be energized. Unto the third, the guile of the desires to energized. Unto the fourth, his domineering arrogance, also to energized. Unto the fifth, unholy daring and the rashness of audacity, de energized. Unto the sixth, striving for wealth by evil means, deprived of its aggrandizement. And to the seventh zone, ensnaring falsehood, 
de-energized. And then, with all the energizings of the spheres stripped from him, clothed in his proper power, he comes to that nature that belongs unto the eighth, and there with those that are is the one mind. They who are there welcome his coming with joy. And he, made like to them that sojourn there, is further here the powers who are above the substance of the eighth sphere, singing their praise to God in a language of their own. And then they, in a band, go to the Father's home. Of their own selves they make surrender of themselves to the powers, and thus becoming powers themselves there in God. This the good end for those who have gained Gnosis, to be made one with God. Thrice greatest Hermes. Why should you then delay? The shepherd asked me. Must it not be, since you have received all, that you should point the way to the world, that through you the race of mankind may by your God be saved? And after he said this, the shepherd of men mingled again with the powers. But I, with thanks and blessings unto the Father of the universal powers, was now freed, full of the power the shepherd had poured into me, and full of what he had taught me about the nature of all and of the loftiest vision. And I inscribed in my memory the benefaction of the divine mind, and I was exceedingly glad, for I was full with that for which I craved. My bodily sleep had come to be my soul's wakefulness. And the closing of my eyes, true vision. And my silence, pregnant with good. And my barrenness of speech, a brood of holy thoughts. Becoming God-inspired, I attained the abode of truth. 